Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions, Module 5 that is Combustion and Thermochemistry. So in this module, we are going to cover four lectures. Now today we are going to discuss about the second one that is conservation of energy for reacting systems. Prior to these lectures, in our last class, we discussed basic considerations, combustion fundamentals with respect to thermodynamic viewpoint. Today we will see that how energy balance equations can be applied for a reacting systems. Now with this, what are the learning components we are going to gain is that we will discuss about some basic introduction to a reacting systems. Then we will touch upon the enthalpy of formations, energy balance for reacting systems, for control volume and for closed systems. Then you will introduce the terms like which we are commonly used in the combustion process that is enthalpy of combustion and heating value of the fuel. So let us start our lecture number 20 that is conservation of energy for reacting systems. So just to give the introduction to reacting system, we all know that the combustion process is nothing but a chemical reactions and in through this mechanism, the energy stored in the chemical bonds is utilized for some other purposes. Now prior to this, when we look at this energy balance equations, we assume that there is no reactions taking place during this thermodynamic process. So, the earlier forms of conservation principle which was used without chemical reactions, now we are going to say that similar principle also can be utilized for reacting systems as well. But if that has to be utilized, then what are the points that needs to be remembered? So, we will revisit the basic thermodynamic energy principles from first law, second law and so on, entropy analysis all those things we will study for the reacting system as well. Now when you deal with the earlier version of thermodynamic systems, we have introduced thermodynamic tables, specific property values in the form of equations for internal energy enthalpy and entropy and which are related to some arbitrary datum states. That means when you evaluate the sub property values that was done with respect to some arbitrary datum value and the choice of arbitrary datum value was meaningless because all our most of our analysis was concentrated towards the change. So ultimately the effect of the datum numbers gets nullified. For example, when you calculate the internal energy change from when a system goes from state 1 to state 2, so we are just bothered the internal change as u2 minus u1. So while calculating u2 minus u1, we are really do not bother what is the absolute value of u1 as well as u2. So it means that while calculating change in the properties, datum state properties are redundant. But this is a very critical, very vital point during a chemical reactions uh, because the during a, a chemical reactions, the reactant vanish and new products are formed. So this is the important aspects that we cannot calculate the difference just by the change of things. And second thing, the temperatures during this process also changes. So these two things is very critical for analysis of reacting systems. So it is desired to evaluate the properties in such a way that there will not be any subsequent ambiguity and inconsistencies means the reference state must be taken into account and it cannot be any arbitrary state it has to be a fixed arbitrary states. Now how do you do that? For example, we are mainly bothered maybe in a reacting systems we are mainly bothered three important properties like internal energy, enthalpy and entropy and of course if you know pressure and volume then one of the information either internal energy or enthalpy is sufficient to calculate one of them. And while calculating these things, 
because in a chemical reactions the reactants and products they will have multiple number of species components and the reactants vanish products are formed and when the products are formed it is formed at some temperatures but what we need to find out that we need to define a state which we called as standard reference state and this is considered at atmospheric pressure and atmospheric temperature that is 1 atmosphere and 298.15 Kelvin. So, this is given as a arbitrary reference zero values. What does this means? That means at this reference states the components are stable. When the components are stable means they are stable in chemical form. For example, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen they are stable gases under atmospheric conditions. But H hydrogen atom, oxygen atom they are monoatomic in nature but they are not chemically stable. When the component is stable you can assign this arbitrary zero value of enthalpy internal energy. So, this is about enthalpy and internal energy treatment. Now, at this same situations when you deal with entropy. So, entropy concept comes from the second law and the second law also says that there is a temperature scale Kelvin scale and the lowest temperature that we can achieve is 0 degree Kelvin and at that point of time the third law of thermodynamics was defined which says that entropy related to the atom is absolute entropy and the absolute entropy values for all the substance at absolute zero temperature is zero. So, this concept was introduced that means while talking about reacting systems we need to discuss the absolute entropy for the components at which they are formed and by that things we are trying to assign the entropy values. So, in the down the line we will see how we are going to assign the values of internal energy enthalpy entropy for the reactants and products during a chemical reactions. Now, we are going to introduce a term what is called as enthalpy of formations. So, by definition enthalpy of formation is nothing but the energy released or absorbed when a compound is formed from its elements all being at reference states. So, all the elements are in reference states and a new compound is formed the amount of energy which is released or absorbed is called enthalpy of formations. The enthalpy of formation is usually determined through standard procedures of statistical thermodynamics because it involves the information about the molecular and atomic level and also we require the spectroscopic data. But we are not dealing with the statistical thermodynamics and in our viewpoint we look at this enthalpy of formation as a global phenomena and we will assign it as a negative value when a compound is formed. So, by default enthalpy formation is negative when a compound is formed. When a compound is formed means heat transfer from the reaction. So, heat transfer from the reaction that means heat is transferred from the reaction and it is exothermic in nature. Now, during a chemical reactions if heat is absorbed so we call this as endothermic reactions we assign this enthalpy formation as a positive number. Then once we have this enthalpy of formation then we can find out the specific enthalpy of the compound at any other state can be found out with respect to standard state. For example, let us see consider this uh, parameter enthalpy molar enthalpy at particular temperature and pressure for any component which is being formed. So, we start with HFO that means molar specific enthalpy of formation for that compound. If we say carbon dioxide is going to be formed and you want to find out its enthalpy of a formation at a given temperature and pressure, then what you are going to find out? the enthalpy of formation of CO2 at reference state and reference state means 1 atmosphere and 298.15 Kelvin plus the delta H bar which is the enthalpy of formation of the compound 
and delta h bar is nothing but the difference of molar enthalpy at given pressure and temperature and the molar enthalpy at reference temperature and pressure. So, these data values are typically available in the books, any thermodynamic books if you look for and towards the end of these thermodynamics books we have lot of tables, figures and we can get all this information. So, basically this information is required from the data table what enthalpy of formation and enthalpy at reference pressure and temperatures. Then moving further let us talk about a particular example that how enthalpy of formation is calculated. So, by principle enthalpy of formation is found by measuring the heat transfer in a reaction in which the compound is formed from the elements. So, you can think of a simple reactor where carbon and oxygen are entering at reference state and pressure and set at same reference pressure and temperature with CO2 is formed. So, basically this reference temperature and pressure is 1 atmosphere and uh, 298.15 Kelvin. So, through this reaction we are getting it and during this formation process if you want to calculate the what is the enthalpy of formation of CO2 one can find it through the energy balance equations. To do that the first thing that you have to do is that you have to write the chemical reactions that is carbon plus oxygen it gives CO2 and for all these things we can find out its molar number or stoichiometric coefficients and this thing number of moles. Then you can write the energy balance because there is no work transfer in the systems but there is heat transfer because it is a heat of formation or heat transfer or heat that either it is reaction is a exothermic or endothermic. So, QCB is your energy balance and then we have to find out on mass basis and molar basis. For example, if in the first equation of energy balance talks about Q dot Cb plus M dot C Hc that is for energy mass of carbon and enthalpy of carbon and mass flow rate of oxygen and enthalpy of oxygen mass flow rate of CO2 and enthalpy of CO2 and there is a negative sign here because it is coming out. And same thing we have written in the in the form of uh, molar form on molar basis mass of carbon mass flow rate is replaced with the molar flow rate of carbon similarly for oxygen and CO2. Now, after solving these equations we get a simplified form that is H bar CO2 that is molar enthalpy of CO2 that or enthalpy of formation for CO2 is equal to Q dot Cb by N dot CO2 plus Hc bar plus HO2 bar. Now, here we are while calculating the enthalpy of formation for carbon dioxide then we have to assign these two enthalpies as 0 values that is because carbon and oxygen they are table components and they at that at the reference conditions. So, if you are assigning this value as 0 then the enthalpy of formation molar enthalpy of formation for CO2 can be written as Q dot Cb by N dot CO2 and this is a negative quantity because reaction is exothermic. Then we will move to next segment of our discussion that is energy balance we will be looking at for a control volume system and we all our reactions we can thought of in a control volume approach like in this particular figure what we can see is that some component C A H B is a fuel okay, and any arbitrary fuel and air is O2 plus 3.76 N2 this, this is model and it enters at certain temperature T A fuel temperature is T F and this reaction takes place and we get the combustion products at the product temperature Tp and during this process uh, we may have a possibility of heat transfer into the control volume and work transfer out of the control volume. So, this is the description of how a reactor works or you can view this chemical reaction as a reactant reacting system and it is a steady state reactor in which hydrocarbon fuel burns completely with theoretical amount of air and the combustion products are formed it is treated as an ideal gas mixtures. 
Conventionally, we are trying to ignore the effects of kinetic and energy and potential energy. Also, we need to see that the combustion products form an ideal gas mixtures. Another view point is that this uh, many a times this air and fuel they can come as a mixture or they can come separately. So, accordingly we will have a single inlet or multiple inlet. So, we, in this way we call this as premixed or non premixed combustion and fuel can be solid, liquid or gas. So, with this viewpoint, if you are going to find the mass and energy rate balance, first thing you have to do is the write the chemical reactions. So, chemical reaction for this C A plus H B and is equal to A plus B by 4 O 2 plus 3.76 N 2. So, we will have C O 2 with coefficient A B by 2 H 2 O plus A plus B by 4 3.76 N 2. Now, here for this reaction we are going to find the energy uh, balance. So, Q dot and of course, all this energy balance when you treat, we have to find out what is the molar flow rate of the fuel. All this reference point is with respect to fuel. So, we can write Q dot C V by N dot F minus W dot C V by N dot F. So, if you do this, then we have basically three entries and out of which two are entering into the systems and one is leaving out of systems. So, when you are entering medium is air. So, air is modeled with oxygen and nitrogen with its appropriate compositions and stoichiometric coefficient value. Products which are formed is CO2, H2O and N2. So, this is how we write this minus HF bar. Okay. So, through this process we can write this enthalpy of reactants and products as Q dot C V by N dot F minus W dot C V by N dot F is H P bar but it products bar minus H R bar. Okay. So, here I do not think this is the required. So, this we can remove this. So, this is products this is for H P bar which is this and this is H R bar. So, from this equation ultimately what we get is Q dot C B by N dot F minus W dot C B by N dot F is equal to summation of the values that is H P. H P is the thing about the enthalpy of the products and H P and H R bar is nothing but the molar enthalpy of the products and reactions per mole of the fuel. So, this can be correlated with the summation of two parameters. First is enthalpy of formation for that component and the enthalpy change. That means, if there are multiple entries of the components, then we can make a summation with respect to by multiplying their number of moles. So, in this case, we have two things one is oxygen other is air. Then moving on to the closed systems when you deal with the closed systems similar explanation can be given here as well, but here our attention is that instead of enthalpy we need to calculate the internal energy. So, because in a closed system when that involves combustion process and in the absence of kinetic energy and potential energy one can write the appropriate form of energy balance equation in the form of internal energies of reactants and products. And in the with same logics both reactants and products are modeled as an ideal gas mixture. All the analysis are subjected with respect to moles of each components each reactant or products. So, here by doing this because in a closed systems if you say in a closed system there is no mass transfer. So, for a closed systems whatever comes means changes takes place that changes takes place with respect to this internal energy. So, basically in a closed system what happens we can say heat or work interaction is possible, but no flow work. Flow work 
और मार्स ट्रांसफर विथ दिस कंडीशन ड्यू टू हीट एंड वर्क इंटरक्शन द चेंज इन दि वर्क एंड हीट ट्रांसफर विल लीड टू इंटरनल एनर्जी चेंज एंड इन दिस क्लोज सिस्टम्स रिएक्शन इज टेकिंग प्लेस एंड वेन दिस रिएक्शन इज टेकिंग प्लेस वी व्यू देम एज रिएक्टेंट्स एंड प्रोडक्ट्स सो यू कैन टेक दिस क्यू माइनस डब्ल्यू इज दि टोटल एनर्जी ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट्स दैट इज एन टाइम्स यू बार मोलर इंटरनल एनर्जी मल्टीप्लाई बाय इट्स नंबर ऑफ मोल्स फॉर द प्रोडक्ट्स एंड नंबर ऑफ मोल्स फॉर रिएक्टेंट्स मल्टीप्लाई बाय द मोलर एंथेलपीज ऑफ इच स्पेसिज ऑफ द रिएक्टेंट्स सो दैट इज ए समेसन हियर नाउ व्हाट यू नो इज नेक्स क्लोज सिस्टम्स द सिस्टम इज एट फाइनल टेम्परेचर टी पी सो द टी पी इज योर टेम्परेचर ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट्स टी आर इज योर टेम्परेचर ऑफ द रिएक्टेंट्स वंस यू नो दिस वी ऑल्सो नो दैट द इंटरनल एनर्जी इज कैन बी रिटेन एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ एंथेलपी प्रेसर एंड वॉल्यूम एंड फॉर एन आइडियल गैस पी वी इज रिलेटेड टू आर बार टाइम्स टी पी वी बार इज इक्वल टू आर बार टाइम्स टी बाय डूइंग सो इन द एंड वॉट यू गेट इज दैट वी कैन फाइंड आउट क्यू माइनस डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल टू दिस फॉर ईच कंपोनेंट वी नीड टू इवेल्युएट द एंथेलपी ऑफ फॉर्मेशन एंथेलपी चेंज माइनस आर बार टी पी सो वी रिप्लेस दिस यू बार आज एच बार माइनस पी वी और एच बार माइनस आर बार टी पी देन वंस यू डू डैट प्रोडक्ट्स वी कैन राइट दिस एक्सप्रेशन फॉर रिएक्टेंट्स वी कैन राइट ऑल्सो दिस एक्सप्रेशन एंड फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन यू वॉन्ट टू गो टू दिस इक्वेशन वॉट हैपन्स इस एंथेलपी वैल्यूज एंथेलपी ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट एंड रिएक्टेंट्स फॉर मोल ऑफ वेल इज रिप्रेजेंटेड विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू एंथेलपी ऑफ फॉर्मेशन प्लस द एंथेलपी चेंज and that we have to do it for products as well as for the reactants so if you do this a simplified expressions from between q and w can be found out now next topic of discussion is enthalpy of combustion now prior to this we know that the enthalpy of formation concepts which we discussed earlier it allows the formulation of energy balance but they really do not replicate the realistic estimate of the reactive systems why because many a times a components can be formed at different conditions or different compositions let me there are many sources in which a components can be formed so instead of targeting how it is formed let us target that when two components react then how they behave or you view this as a change of enthalpies between reactants and products and that is defined in terms of enthalpy of combustion so it is defined as the difference between the enthalpy of products and the enthalpy of reactants when complete combustion occurs at a given pressure and temperatures that means in a complete combustion process one can define the enthalpy of combustion if that is the case this hrp bar which is reactants and products included it is nothing but hp bar minus hr bar and hp bar is nothing but the summation of all the incoming fuel air streams or for the products or summation of all outgoing combustion products with their multiply with their respective mole fraction and for reactants it is the number of entries for the reactants so that is summation of ni into hi bar and finally we can get that hr by p like we have derived earlier is equal to q dot cb by n dot n that means enthalpy of combustion in a reacting system is q dot cb by n dot n n stands for number of moles for the fuel and this was defined with respect to molar basis one can also write it for with respect to mole mass basis 
and the last segment that we are going to discuss is that heating value of the fuel. So, we have enthalpy of formation, then we move to enthalpy of combustion and then now we are moving to heating value. So, when I am talking about enthalpy of formation, we are bothered about how that component during a reaction is formed. But when you are moving for enthalpy of combustion, we view that let us say all the components have been formed and reactants and products has been formed and then we are really bothered what is the difference between the enthalpies between products and reactants. Now, having said this, we are now going to introduce the heating value of the fuel. So, basically all it matters because it fuel enters and when it reacts with oxidizer air, it the combustion is initiated. So, it is the fuel heating value that really matters a lot to all the audience. So, the ideal way of looking at the enthalpy of combustion during a reaction is with respect to heating value of the fuel. In fact, when any fuel is defined, we have to also specify its heating value. For example, petrol, diesel, kerosene, all of them will have some heating value. We define them in terms of heating value. So, as a matter of common audience, it is better that we should talk about in the heating value and moreover, then when you deal with the enthalpy of combustion, that number is always a negative quantity. So, what you do is that we replace that enthalpy of combustion as heating value of the fuel and become which is very widely accepted and it is always a positive number and which is equal to magnitude of enthalpy of combustion. That means, whatever during a chemical reaction, whatever magnitude of enthalpy of combustion that is assigned as the heating value of the fuel. Now, there are two heating value of the fuel is can be possible. One is at lower heating value, the other is the higher heating value. So, during a chemical reaction what may happen is that combustion products are formed, they are at already at elevated temperatures and we say we know that during the combustion process always water is one of the entity. Now, this water at that elevated temperature will exist in vapor form. So, if you calculate the heating value of the fuel during a combustion process, we assign it as a lower heating value. Now, when this combustion products are released from this combustion environment to atmospheric condition, it is basically cooled. So, when it is cooled, the water vapors try to condensate and when all the water vapors try to condensate, that means similar amount of heat is also released. So, that number is assigned as a higher heating value. So, higher heating value of the fuel is defined when all the water vapors formed during combustion chemical reactions is in the form of liquid state and when lower heating value is recognized when the, all the products are in the vapor state. When the gaseous products of the combustion are cooled at constant mixture pressure, the dew point temperature is reached. So, when water vapors begins to condensate this will cause the condensation or that is deposition of water and that means in other words we can say higher heating value of the fuel exceeds the lower heating value is nothing but the difference in the energy that is that will be released. So, here in the final note we can say whatever HRP we get is a enthalpy of combustion is always a negative quantity and we assign that as a positive number as the heating value of the fuel. Now, whatever we have discussed so far, we will try to solve a numerical problems based on the concepts that we covered today. At the learning components, we covered about mainly on enthalpy of formation, enthalpy of combustion and heating value of the fuel. So, based on this, we will try to solve a problem which talks about a methane and air combustion system in a simple gas turbine unit. So, if you look at a gas turbine unit, typically we have a compressor. That compressor is coupled with a turbine and fuel is introduced in a combustor. So, we say and the combustion products comes and enters into the turbine and when they expand in the turbine, we get power output and that is entry air enters 
into the compressor and fuel enters to the combustor. And if you treat entire things as a control volume, then we can say there are two entries, one for air, other for fuel, there is wall output that means a combustion products and this combustion products goes out. And what are the things that has given to us? This fuel is methane CH4 and it enters at 1 atmosphere 25 degree centigrade and we have air or oxidizer is air which is O2 plus 3.7276 N2 and we are saying it is 400 percent theoretical air. Then when you say combustion products it is at 457 degree centigrade and this 457 degree centigrade is about 730 Kelvin and this oxidizer is also oxidizer at same conditions as that of fuel. So, this is one atmosphere 25 degree centigrade and what is given is the fuel flow rate m dot f is 3 kg per second. So, we know the molecular weight of fuel that is CH4 that is 16. So, we can find out n dot f. Okay. So, if this is the problem, the first thing that we need to do is that we have to write the balanced chemical reactions. So, the main reaction we can say CH4 plus 2 O2 plus 3.76 N2 it is supposed to give CO2 plus twice H2O plus 7.52 N2. So, this is the balanced reaction. Now, with 400 percent theoretical layer, what the reaction is going to be there? So, we, can, we have to write it as CH4 plus 4 times into 2 means air is supplied 4 times that, that of fuel 3.76 N2. Now, it will give you some number. We do not know what is this ACO2 plus BH2O plus CO2 because it is excess air. So, it means higher oxygen C times O2 plus D times N2. Now, we have to make the mass balance or species balance. By doing this, by doing for carbon, we say A is equal to 1. For hydrogen, we say twice B is equal to 4. So, it will be B is equal to 2. For oxygen, we can write B plus twice C plus twice A is equal to 16, 4 into 2 into 2 that is 16. So, we know B and A, so this will give you C is equal to 6. Then for N2, we can write twice D is equal to 4 into 2 plus 3.76 into 2, 4 into 2 into 3.76 into 2 and 2. So, this will give you d as 30.08. So, we get this equation to be rewritten as CH4 plus 8 O2 plus 3.76 N2 will give you CO2 plus twice H2O plus 6 CO2 plus 30.08 N2. Now, we are in a position for to write the energy balance. So, 
to energy balance because it's a turbine complete systems so heat comes from the fuel work comes out from the turbine so you can write down q dot cv by n dot f minus w dot cv by n dot f plus hr bar minus hp bar is equal to 0. Now what other information is given is that heat transfer from this engine is 6 percent of net power. So we can say q dot cv is equal to minus 0 0.06 w dot cv because heat is coming out w work is also coming out. So there is a negative sign here and uh, other parameter we can say and uh, this number will be we can write 1.06 w dot cv by n dot f would be hr bar minus hp bar ok. So now we are going to find out what is this hr and hp. So to do that what we need to know we have to write down this equation what is hr bar for hr bar we can say it is for reactants that is molar enthalpy of reactants reactants consist of uh, methane oxygen nitrogen so the enthalpy of reactants can be found out as hfo bar plus delta h bar that we have to write it for ch4 plus that is 8 times hfo that is molar number uh, for oxygen bar plus 30.08 times hf bar o plus delta h n2 so here we can see that all are at both reactants and both reactants that is methane as well as air they are at same reference condition 1 atmosphere and 25 degree centigrade. So we can simply assign this delta change value to 0 and oxygen O2 and N2 they are stable components so we can assign this 0 for their enthalpy of formations. So what left out is hr bar is equal to no, is nothing but hfo ch4 and that is at 25 degree centigrade. So this data table will give you this value as minus 74850 kilojoule per kg mole fuel. Now similarly for products H bar products products consist of CO2 H2O and N2. So similar expression we can write HFO plus delta H bar that is CO2 plus twice times HFO bar plus delta H H2O plus 6 times HFO plus delta H bar that is for O2 plus 30.08 times HFO bar plus delta H bar N2. Now here what are the things that we can assign to 0 enthalpy of formation for stable component this number to be 0 and this n2 is a stable component so this will be 0. So what is left out is these numbers and this uh, you have to calculate these conditions at 7 30 degree Kelvin. So at 7 30 degree Kelvin the data table will give you HFO CO2 is minus 
0.520 all are in kilojoule or kg mole kelvin hfo bar for ch4 that number is minus 74850 then we have hf bar enthalpy of formation for O2 uh, delta H we require delta H bar for CO2 is equal to 19258 then delta H bar O2 this number is 13495 delta H bar N2 12860 so you have all number co2 delta h h2o we do not have h2o delta h h2o so delta h bar h2o is 153314 so this is the data table so by inserting this we can get the final number as HP bar is equal to minus seven four eight five zero kilojoule per kilo mole fuel and HR bar is already known is this is wrong HR bar is minus seven four eight five zero HP bar is minus three five nine four seven five kilojoule for kilo mole fuel. So once you say this, then we can find out from this equation about W dot C B is equal to five one eight one kilowatt. So this is our requirement that we need to find out what is the net power developed by the fuel. So of course you have, you have to uh, your n dot f you have to find out from the molecular weight m dot f by molecular weight of fuel. So that is 0 0.3 divided by uh, 16. So if you put this in our last equation which was we have written as 1.06 w dot cv divided by n dot f is equal to hr bar minus hp bar so that equation when it is with this data we can get w dot cv so this is all about the problem that is associated with the power developed in a gas turbine combustor which mainly uses uh, methane as the fuel. The next problem is about the calculation of enthalpy of combustion of gaseous methane at 1 atmosphere and 25 degree centigrade. And here we need to calculate the enthalpy of combustion for gaseous methane and two conditions. One is when the liquid water is in the products and the other is water vapor is in the products. So to do that, so it is a question number 2, to do that first thing you have to write the methane air reaction. So methane air reaction is CH4 plus twice O2 plus 3.76 and 2 will give you CO2 plus twice H2O plus 7.52 N2 and here we say that both reactants and products they are at 1 atmosphere and 25 degree centigrade. So enthalpy of combustion is defined by H bar R P that is molar enthalpy and that is nothing but in this case we can write H bar CO2 plus twice that is 2 mole 
H bar H2O minus for reactants H bar CH4 plus twice times H bar O2 and this nitrogen will cancel. because both side we have same number so it will be minus now each of this enthalpies needs to be expressed with respect to their formation part so we can write it as hfo plus delta h bar co2 plus hfo plus delta h bar H2O it is 2 times minus HFO plus delta H bar CH4 minus twice time HFO plus delta H bar O2. Now let us see what we can assign and they are at 1 atmosphere and 25 degrees. So stable compounds they will vanish. So stable compound will vanish means this number will vanish and other points other components like delta H will vanish because reactants and products at same temperature that is one atmosphere and 25 degree centigrade. So this number will vanish, all delta H term will vanish. So we will land off having three terms is HFO CO2 plus HFO H2O twice times minus HF bar O CH4. We have to refer data. This data has to be referred at 25 degree centigrade. So that number we can write it as HF O CO2 as minus 393 520 kilojoule per kilo mole fuel then hf bar for h2o now here we have water in liquid form so we have data for liquid and hf h2o data for vapor so we will have two numbers minus 285830 other is minus 241820 same unit. Another number this enthalpy of formation for methane that number is minus 74850. So we have all the numbers we can insert it then we can find it out first part liquid water in the products so we can calculate this was enthalpy of this number is minus eight nine zero three three zero kilojoule per kilo mole fuel second part water vapor which is hrrp is equal to minus 802310 kilojoule per kilo mole fuel so we can assign each LHB lower heating value of CH4 
lower rating value with this number we can write it as my this negative will be positive number so it's 802310 divided by its molecular weight 16 so this is 50019 kJ per kg 12 HHB for CH4 will have 890330 by 16 so this number would be 55507 kilojoule per kg 12 so what it means that at 25 degree centigrade the lower heating value of methane is about 50 megajoule per kg of fuel and higher heating value of methane will be about 55 megajoule per kg fuel. So remember this was taken at 25 degree centigrade and that point of time for this our simplicity this delta H value was neglected because both reactants and products they are at same temperatures. Now if I ask you to calculate the reactants are at one atmosphere and 25 degree centigrade products are at different pressure and temperatures then we have to the problem will be more complicated this delta H terms has to be evaluated with respect to that product temperatures and during that point of time these numbers will be also be different but however for the simplicity of problem solving it was simplified that we have assumed that both fuel and air they are at same temperature and pressures. So this is all about the lecture for today. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.